We were challenged with creating a concrete canoe. This canoe had to be within the dimensions of 18 by 6 by 5 inches and had to be created from concrete that we mixed ourselves. All the materials used to create and mold this canoe had to be under a $40 budget. So we asked ourselves how would we know if we were successful in completing this task. Our answer was that we wanted to maximize the payload capacity of our canoe by creating an efficient concrete solution and sustainable canoe shape. Once we knew what our challenge and constraints were, we had to brainstorm solutions to the challenge that fell within the constraints. It was at this part of our design cycle. We needed to design on the general design of the canoe hull, but no final design had been made yet. We still needed to do research on whole design to make sure we were going to meet our goal set by our answer to the ask given to us. We began our research focusing on three things, canoe shape, concrete molding, and concrete ratios. In regards to the canoe shape, we learned that it was best to maximize the width of our canoe to maximize the stability and strength of the hull. We also learned that the weight that our canoe could hold would be largely dependent on its length, more than any other dimension. Moving on to concrete molding, our research stressed one main idea. The stronger the mold, the stronger the concrete. However, since we had a restricted budget, we planned to mold our canoe from a cardboard skeleton of the cross sections of the inside of our canoe that would then be filled in by foam. As for the concrete materials, our research suggested that we use a mixture of perlite, play sand, concrete, and water, but the ratios that we used would be left up to our own testing. When we were designing our 3D model, we decided to create a 3D model of our canoe and inventor. We were then able to test the plausible ratios of concrete by using the dimensions of our canoe and the calculated density of each material. After our virtual testing, we then created three most effective concrete mixes out of the eight possible mixtures in real life to see if the ratios were viable. We then found that our mixture six was the most effective in real life. Unfortunately, we ran into some roadblocks along our concrete voyage. The foam and cardboard molding plan proved ineffective. The mold was not strong enough to mold our canoe and our mold did not have the precise dimensions of our canoe's 3D plan. So we started brainstorming again and decided that 3D printing would give us a precise, sturdy, and cheap mold in a relatively quick time frame. One of the problems we ran into is that when we were trying to find out how we wouldn't allow our concrete to stick to our mold, we, printed, uh, we decided to print the inside of our canoe into sections. Uh, then we covered the pieces in aluminum foil to attach the pieces, but also to make sure that the concrete did not stick to our mold. Then we set the concrete in the correct shape using our hands and concrete tools, and allowed the concrete to dry for 48 hours before we tested it. Then we sanded it down to our desired uh, dimension and look with the generic V-shape on the bottom. We went into Fed Day incredibly confident. We even named our canoe Penelope. She was able to hold 5 pounds and 6.3 ounces. We walked away a little disappointed with a fourth place. However, we are very proud to be very competitive within the competition. In order to improve our design, we would have done two things. First, build our hole taller. Our hull ended up being shorter than the maximum allowed, and the extra height would have helped it carry more weight. 
Second, we would have reached maximum width quicker. Making our hull wider, faster, would have aided in payload capacity, buoyancy, and stability in the water by increasing the volume for payload inside the canoe and displacing more water. My advice to future NC State first year engineering students is that, first of all, this challenge pushes you and pushed us to become better uh, leaders, better team members, and overall better engineers. We have to think on our feet and you have to be willing to get your hands dirty. Our advice to you is to start on your project early so that when, uh, when you run into problems, you have time to readjust and fix those problems. To the future NC State First Engineering students, good luck.